calls his extension. It's a 30 second shot clock with one 30 second extension per player per rack. Oh, it's filler. I was just going to say, hangs the two over the pocket. It was delayed reaction and it fell in after what seemed like an eternity. Yeah, that might not fall in in a few racks' time just because obviously the balls will be brand new. You can see there, it should stop, but just slid and found its way in. cheer that always accompanies Joshua Filler winning a rack here in Fulda. He was dialed in. Could be worrying signs for Raga this. He never guaranteed a shot on the lowest ball. This is what the sport of nine ball is about. You've got to become good in all aspects of the game. Most players on tour can run the balls out. But it's this side of it. It's making the correct decision. Yeah, that was galling, though, for Fuller because the last ball rolling was the seven that got in the way. Not easy to get on the three, but I think he feels like where can I play the push out to? He's made the nine ball! He's made the Jumping out into a 2-0 lead, bringing the house down. In went the two via the aerial route, and lo and behold, the nine quickly followed. Look at this goal. He took the gamble. He knew it was difficult to play the push. He knew it was difficult to get on the three. This is a similar shot to the two ball in the sense of he can afford to cheat the rail here at a certain pace. It will slide in the pocket. Don't want to hit this ball too hard, though. Give the pocket a chance. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Just see what. The natural path of the cue ball takes here. Yeah, he's gone off the three rails. Here's the third rail now. Perfect for the eight in the side. We've seen this a lot, Phil. When this man gets in front, he's a hard man to stop. Last night it was a filler thriller. On the evidence of what we've seen so far, it could be a filler runaway. He leads Anton Raga 3 0. Overcooked it. So the first real chance for Raga to make an impression. Could have done with another foot there on the cue ball. Problem solved, though. The man from Cebu is off and running. The Filipino flag is flying in that front row. Three balls close, you know. Oh, Filler made an early nine ball in rack two. This time it's Raga's turn to get a little bit of fortune.
doesn't want the four ball going near the top rail on this safety shot. If it goes near the top rail, you're just leaving an easier kick shot. You're making it a bigger target. Josh will go two rails here. Try and pop the four in that corner pocket. Extension code. Yeah, Raga also not happy that the cue ball didn't weld more up to the five. <clears throat> it was good effort. You could see how close he got. Very busy player around the table, isn't he? Hustling and bustling. There is movement on the shot, but if you notice, it's mostly after the cue's been delivered. start but Anton Raga now within one rack. Joshua Filler leads 3-2. There were challenge matches you could sit there and watch Efren Reyes Bustamante. Has he got the cue ball back here? That is a big mistake. Big margin for error there. It seemed a really dead contact. Yeah, you might have to try and play the seven off the rail and then off the eight if that is available. Yeah, so we'd go in the pool all every night. We'd see all these challenge matches and the guy behind the bar even. Oh, good combo. There's a cue ball. Oh, it's going to the side. They're rescued. Yeah, the cleaner of the club, Phil. He'd go in the day after. They'd be sweeping the floor. They'd Grab the rack cue. Even they look like a world beater. It's one thing to look like a world beater, it's another to be one. Joshua Filler is the latter. Just a degree of doubt about the nine ball. Tiny degree. We can't quite give him this one. No, because. He started this match a little edgy. No problem there, though. No problem at all. Joshua Fuller lost a couple of racks, but he's back on the horse. He leads 4-2. We're around an hour by train from Frankfurt. Joshua Fuller is... Seven racks away from the final. Easy shot on the blue two as well, off the break shot. Purple five ball. Looks like it's covered a little bit. Not so sure if he's just come round to look at the three nine combo. I think he's got a bit of an angle, yeah. Well, he is. He's playing it. He needs this to travel though. Wants to get straight. Yeah, this is awkward now. Extension fold. If there's ever a time to take an extension, it's now. Fully invested. 3-9. Bingo. The crowd loving it. 5-2. Look at the spin. Look at the spin. Very juicy from Joshua. Spin to win. What a shot that was. 
Now that's the definition of manufacturing an angle. Needs to play this hard. This is the shot we see missed a lot. Unless your name's Joshua Filler. What a beauty again. We've actually seen iterations of this sixth ball missed down the rail as well over the course of the week. Normally, though, when players are tentative, and you can never accuse Filler of that. He plays that shot often. He doesn't try and get too much out of the cue ball. He backs himself to pull another tough shot out. You see how he's just done it there, Phil? A lot of players would swing that hard and come three rails, try and get closer to the eight. Similar on the sixth ball, he just keeps leaving himself long, backs himself to pot the next ball. This will be some run out if he can pot this eight ball and get on the nine. Extension code. Also, that camera angle always looks a lot easier, the shot. But this is thin. Wants this to bounce off the rail. Well, decision time. Taking it into the corner offers a more generous pocket. Is he going in the middle or is he going in the corner? Middle it is. What a run out from Joshua Filler. Boy, he's on top form today. Now leading for the first time by four racks at 6-2. She's been known to tell him off a few times. Good effort, that is okay, that is more than okay. Look at the tight little gap he had to land in. Yeah, realised he couldn't cheat the pocket from that distance, so kept it simple. Nothing simple about this eight, though. Has to be treated with utmost respect. Yeah, and he can't forget about the cue ball. Cue ball's going up off the top rail. He missed it. He's missed it. Big little moment in this match. That's the second time you've said that this week. Big little moment. It's either big or little. Come on. You know what I mean, Mr. Yates. Didn't see the miss coming, I must be honest. Anton Lager delighted it did. Matches of this distance tend to ebb and flow. Have we just seen momentum shift in favour of the Filipino? The pressure just seems to build up. As you can run two or three racks on your opponent, they've not had much table time. So when they finally get back to the table, the back arm has seized up a little bit. Well, that's what Filler said yesterday in an interview. He said that towards the tail end of the match against Mieska Fotunski, his cue arm felt heavier than the rest of his body combined. He's playing the carom. The six doesn't go. He's chasing the nine ball. The carom's there. He started to cheer as well. Did he just come round and have a look at the potting angle? Surely not. No, he's played safe. Look at the safety shots we're seeing here, Phil. Just look at these safety shots.
Two rails, kick and Foul stick. Shot. He's missed the three altogether. Go in hand. Three of the four quarterfinals went to the wire. <laughs> Who's to say the first semi-final won't do the same? It's all tied up. Six racks each. Station code. Certainly looks like there's a gap there. Needs to hit this ball quite full, otherwise the cue ball will start leaking out to the left. That was the problem. You don't hit it full. The cue ball won't stay there. Start the clock, please. A few groans when the cue ball went in, but there was also a few restrained cheers. Filler retains the tactical initiative. Where he was going, then he was going fetching his cue. He'd left it at the other side of the arena. Cues are all over the place. Well, this is close. Look how high he's queuing up. He's got to get the ball oh, shot. Through. Yeah. No extension left, did he? Go so ahead. it was all, it was all a bit rushed. Coming to the business end of this first semi-final. Second semi-final will follow SVB against David L. Kadit. Two men in their 40s. Oh, the this is the battle of two 20-somethings. <laughs> Anton Rager hasn't been in front at all. And that remains the case because Joshua Filler, the darling of the crowd, is back in front at 7 6. Oh, is the cue ball going to finish? I think he's okay, Phil. Oh, he is. He's played a good shot there. I think that's his best part of the match. The Dragon keeps coming back for more. You have to wonder, will Joshua Filler be going down in flames? In a second. He'd love to hit the bottom side of the red three here. Actually, either side of it, and he's got a chance of getting it safe. Oh, and he's opened the four ball up. Ball in hand. The table is open, ball in hand. Start the clock, please. Couple of options here. He could just draw the cue ball back. And just leave a pot on the eight. He doesn't 
really want to try go crazy with the cue ball in practice you can rip this right back off the top rail using the loop bridge that usually means the player's going to do that that was the shot we're talking about he's really enjoying himself out there now He was 3-0, he was 6-2 down. But now, Anton Raga from the Philippines finds himself in front. Just waiting for the moment where you draw Gary Wilson in the first round. That's the match I want to see. Yeah, it should be, should be interesting if we ever get to play each other, but... Yeah, Gary's done well this week. He's, you can see he's getting more comfortable as the tournaments go on. Good shot there from Raga. Really set this rack up now. But I suppose with Philippines winning the, the World Cup, he's got his motivation to do well himself. Spot on, he was inspired, he's said so. And Anton Raga is loving life. 6 2 down on the verge of being 7 2 adrift. And now he's turned things around wholesale. He leads by nine racks to seven. Oh, now then, he's saying the table Sorry, veered thanks. off there. He caught the four before the two. Not recommended. Yeah, he's definitely Start sick. Up, it, it rolled off. Hard for us to tell. Well, he's hit that quite hard, hasn't he, Stuart? I mean, it'd have to be rolling pretty bad. Yeah, he looked like he just had a little bit of left-hand side, left-hand English. Getting, getting, trying to get the knowledge of the game. Horrible queuing, but the five. Is coached in regardless. Yeah, but the cue ball's drifted away. I know you'd still ball. fancy putting this ball, don't get me wrong, but you, you could be a lot closer to your work. Got to get the cue ball coming back as well, so he's going to have to draw this back with a little bit of spin. <laughs> Pass that test. I have a feeling it's about to get loud in this arena. Okay. Listen to the roar. Fill it back within one. Yeah, it's just plain percentages. That's a bit movie. Where's the cue ball finished? Actually, okay. She can hardly watch. Big shot, this. I thought going in the top pocket there, to be honest. Wow, what a shot. She was saying, what happened? Well, what happened was excellence. 
Well, I hope she uh, understands it's a race to 11. I hope she doesn't think this is Hill Hill. It's a race to 10 in the previous round. From 6-2 down, playing Joshua Phillip in his home country, Anton Raga has got this nine to get on the hill. He's getting some support, there's no doubt about that. This is quite some story. And when you're successful, it's Q Sports Immortality. As for Anton Raga, this is seismic if he can win this match. He's not shown us any reason why he's not going to clear the table It Doesn't look like he's going to fold to me. Yeah, he's playing confident shots there, obviously. In between the, the seven and nine ball, I'd, I'd maybe probably be looking to leave it long into the end pockets, just so you're sort of not risking getting hooked by any balls. So extension ball. You can see he's, he feels good out there, and no reason why he can't he can't clear up here and and win the match. Phil got away with it in the quarterfinals. He was sat in that very chair. He was watching Fedor Gorst clear the table at 9 8 up, Fedor was. Fedor played a poor positional shot from the 8 to the 9. He missed the 9, but you just can't see that happening here. These three balls are just perfect. for big money is about to be on the money. And bear in mind, he was 6-2 down. This World Nine Ball Tour just produces one unbelievable story after the next. shot is tough because you don't feel I mean that's the fresh rack you don't feel so good so let's see he has to drop a little bit that's perfect I spoke to him earlier and we've been talking a lot about how he's not been doing so well in these big events Fran but he feels he's actually been playing better than his results would indicate and he's just been unfortunate to keep getting drawn against top players or guys in the form of their life is that how you've seen it for him over the last while yeah, he, he's, he's, uh, for me, I was training with, with him every day. He, he's playing really good, but sometimes you play good and, and you lose. It's depend on the break, is, if he's working or not. But, uh, I mean, like I said before, David, under pressure, is one of the best players. I think best known for the World Masters, a tournament he's won on two occasions. But perhaps now as well for that World Cup success that the two of you had together last year.
Idea start for David O'Kady. Just got to go for the make here, huh? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think he has to go to try to the to corner pocket. But I mean, the most uh -oh. important. Oh, oh, the Nemo. Just ran out of gas at the very end. And suddenly a chance for Alcady to lead 2 0. Yeah, I think it's a good good chance for David. Yesterday he was playing really, really smart. Yeah, he's looking for the combination. Seven nine. And he can't possibly miss it. So the only European player left in the European Open, David O'Kady, leads 2-0. He's going forward. He's going to play safe on the six. Oh, that was a hard way to shoot it, wasn't it, Fran? I'm going forward with the cue ball. Yeah, he chose to play follow, but to be honest, I think I played draw. But later, you had to play like a long shot. But it, it was a tough, tough shot. Yeah, top spin or bottom spin, it was always going to be a difficult shot. But, of course, he's out there, right? He's the one who sees it and feels it, so you got to go with what he's, what decision he's making. And we just commented how smart a player he is, so hard to fault David Alcady. Interesting shot here. Got to yeah. spin this. She has to pass the cue ball between the nine and seven. It's it. I think it's perfect. Yeah, and the reason why that's difficult for Shane is it's not one of his favorite shots to spin the ball. He would rather kind of stun the ball, hit the ball a little harder at times. But she doesn't want to shoot straight at it. Worried about fouling the cue ball, I think. So now maybe going to go to the rail with the cue ball and trying to use the seven after that. This is a little touchier and can certainly get away from you. Now he's coming back to the end rail, which is smart because he's going to let him see the pink. You talk there about the quality of the field that he beats. Van Boning to win the tournament in Iowa. Certainly borne out by his last two opponents. Semi was against Skylar Woodward, who's been so consistent this year. And in the final, he beat Fedor Gorst, who had actually beaten Van Boning himself earlier in the year to win another high-quality event in the States, just a bit below this level, the Derby City Classic. It's going to hurt there catching the knuckle on the side. He would have got the snooker with the behind the nine. The pink had gotten past the side, but. So he's run into one or two minor issues along the way here, but. Routine now for the eight and nine. Eleven is still a long way off. He's putting some early pressure on his opponent here, who hasn't started particularly well. David O'Kady stretches his lead to 4-1. David O'Kady, yes, that's what we're there to do. Another big shot here. Watch out for that lower right corner. The cue ball. Oh, and David's starting to get a little quick with the takeaway, and that happened to him a couple times last night. Been a little fortunate with a few misses as well, so. Yeah, 
That's the sort of thing that you might expect to see to get to about eight or nine, but still relatively early in the match, a concerning sign. Yeah, and the thing that's so concerning, if you're a viewer or pros, they don't aim that poorly. <laughs> you know, it's the actual stroke itself that causes all the problems. And you may fluke this. Definitely trying to play a two-way shot. It's going to get right in the gap for Al Katie. Now David's got a good look to come two cushions. Top cushion, left side cushion, I think, with low left, and come at the seven, trying to get position on the red three. Maybe able to go straight up and down the table and get by the eight. It looks like maybe not, though, to me. So we'll see how he cues the ball. Yeah, low left English. Should wrap that up upper left-hand corner. That's got to slow down, unless it contacts the purple. That's kind of how it is, but you know, we all miss, but if missing is caused by something kind of fundamentally wrong in the stroke, what happens, whether you get away with it or not, you're in big time fear of that, you know, kind of peeking its head back out that stroke. So, yeah, that's certainly true. Perhaps a bit easier to put it out of your head if you don't pay the penalty for it. No, absolutely, it doesn't. It doesn't weigh on you quite as much. That's for sure. Of course, what's also bound to help him is the fact that Van Boning is struggling a little bit as well. Okay, that one hit a little wide to the pocket, but never really a, a worry. Well, he's made a few mistakes. But he's still established a very strong position in the match. David Arcady almost halfway to victory already. He leads 5-1. Looks like Shane's going to play the simple safety behind the green six. And this is where David has gotten a few rolls as far as after some misses, not really leaving anything offensive. Just like Shane played safe on the two ball earlier and David kicked it right on in. Maybe it was a three ball, but... Going to attempt to do the same here, I believe. Now, he was sizing up the two rail kick, which I kind of like, but he can't reach it that well. Two rail kick would have been to the right side rail, top rail come between the pink and the blue two coming across the blue two, but. Hard to argue this one going for the make. Good thing for Shane is he can handle a lot on the nine, so gets to shoot this a little more comfortably. He was left the two. Felt like an opportunity he really needed to make the most of. Despite one or two little bumps in the road along the way, that is what Shane Van Boning has done. So, that trims David Arcady's lead to 5-2. And stuck on that number. Shane Van Boning to break. Trailing five racks to two. Stroke, ball in hand. It's flat. I don't think he really has to punch it much with the top inside. Just kind of float above the middle of the table. Yeah, I don't. That actually changes the route of the cue ball. And 
Kind of got into it, made it hook a little bit. Should be okay with the one rail speed coming down the table for the nine. I know you and Carl love to talk about the cool golds, JJ. And they've been smiling on David Alcady in a number of different ways so far this afternoon here in Germany. In this instance, it happened in the form of Van Boning scratching off the break, presenting Alcady with ball in hand and a great opportunity. And he's four clear again. David Alcady is Shane Van Boning now by six racks to two. Alcady can win this European Open today. He will be leading that race. Trying to bend the cue ball a little bit here. Bend it too much. So now after Fast a couple of nice safety shots. Down. SV be in a good spot here. Not he's an easy the out. I mean, he's got to shoot a nice shot here from the two, the three, and get a little angle to get back over for the pink off of the red three. So. See the five in a little bit of an awkward spot considering the six is up table. The green six, the brown seven, you got to come back down. Watch out. Wow. Foul strike, ball in hand. Please start the clock. You know, we'll see what kind of opportunity he is given past this scratch and beyond. Now, in this rack, it looks like game over. So that was a good chance for Van Boning to apply a little more pressure here. Scratching the side. That's Costa, David O'Kady. Only four away from victory now, it's 7-3. That one by some piece, and Shane should attack here with a cross side bank on the one. Just about medium speed. I guess he can check the cue ball easily. Is he going to come some four rails around? All right, he's just going to play short side. This is going to bounce a little bit. This is going to be a bit of a tester and a theme for Shane to clean the cue ball towards the end of the rack, it seems. Control though, it's 8 4 to the man from Spain. Doesn't have to totally ease it, but of course, doesn't want to put too much speed. Kind of track the cue ball kind of on the line he's on now. No reason to run into another ball. Oh my. This one he never expected to be able to hang and the difficult pockets. We've seen a lot of it.
were both making mistakes earlier in the match. It looks as though Okady has shaken that off better than Van Bonin has. And still, Van Bonin has not managed to win two racks in a row at any stage of this match. Bad miss from the American. He sat down for the rest of the rack. David O'Kady won it and now leads 9-4. Used his extension. Hard part done now. So the nine is easy. Good resilience, good determination shown there. Shane Van Boning suddenly looks to have a little bit of belief back in his eyes. Bounce drop. Ball in hand. Will it hit seven? Can I see a replay of that one, please? Yeah, the call is that he hit the seven first. Yeah, yeah and he That's did. Right. Good spot, Ben Taylor Fuente. Now the European Open, the UK Open, and so on and so forth. It would be a very different situation in the final tonight, wouldn't it? He's up against Van Boning, just about the most experienced man here. Anton Raga, a complete newcomer to events of this nature. In yeah. a couple of moments' time, it looks as though he's going to be one rack away from setting up that encounter. Yeah, Raga, though, it seems like not only enjoying it, but making leaps and bounds in that experience every match. He was making literal leaps and bounds after his win earlier over Joshua Filler. And David Arcady will be pretty delighted if he can take one more here. Shane Van Boning won't give up hope yet. We've seen great fightbacks from him in the past. He needs Two ball for the pink. That could go a long ways in that final this evening. As far as confidence and getting started right. Yeah, like all these shots, every one of them's been a little different. And he's handled all of them, Michael. And he's got to handle one more here. Skyler Woodward will be watching, you know. He will clinch the first US Moscone Cup place. Guarantee his ninth appearance in a row if this goes down. Yeah, the epitome of the 50 yard line, it looks like. This moment is all about David Alcady. And the moment for now has passed him by. He battled so hard and just couldn't get in prime position. Caught up with him right at the end. Shane Van Boning has absolutely thumped that nine in. We still have a pool match here. We've still got a semi final. Still got a place in the final to fill. To follow.
he was trying to catch the point with the cue ball there. You normally wouldn't draw into this position. Extension cord. Tough shot in the circumstances. Knew that if he missed that, it might be his last involvement in this year's European Open. Trying to bang it around, and that's that's a little advanced there, David. Great shot. Ball in hand from here for Al Qaeda. Would almost certainly be end of contest. He's not going to have it. But where is this going to finish? I think it may as well be ball in hand. I think the purple does squeeze by. The green six, and he can go forward, and maybe bump the eight to open up, make things a little easier. I could just hold there. Yeah, that was always the issue, wasn't it? Wasn't a hard hit for Van Boning. I wasn't able to get it safe. And really now, Al Qaeda should claim his place in tonight's final. Made some mistakes early on. Still managed to carve out a 5-1 lead. Later had a five-rack advantage at 8-3. That became 9-4 and subsequently 10-5. And Boning hadn't won back-to-back -back racks at any stage of the match. And when he did, he got back to 10-7. There was a chance for him in this rack. For the second year in a row, it's going to be disappointment on the last day of the European Open for Shane Van Boning. We'll see him again, looking for his record sixth US Open next month. But David O'Kady will be back here tonight. A smile, a wink and a warm handshake from the defeated former world champion. David O'Kady has defeated Shane Van Boning by 11 racks to seven.